Mary is shooting an arrow straight up into the air. The velocity of the arrow is given by the formula v equals 86 minus 32t, where t equals the number of seconds since the arrow was shot, and v equals the velocity of the arrow in feet per second. Velocity means speed in a certain direction. In this situation, a positive velocity means the arrow is going up. A negative velocity means the arrow is going down. Mary wants to know for what values of t the arrow's velocity will be positive or equivalently traveling upwards. Write an inequality that represents the velocity in terms of t being strictly greater than zero. Because the velocity equals 86 minus 32 t, the inequality is 86 minus 32 t is greater than zero. This represents the values of t where t is positive. Next, we're asked to solve this inequality. Let's do this on the next slide. Remember, when solving inequality, if we multiply or divide both sides by a negative, we must reverse the inequality symbol. The first step is to isolate the variable term by undoing the positive 86. We undo 86 by subtracting 86 on both sides of the inequality. Simplifying, this difference is zero, and now we have negative 32t is greater than negative 86. Because negative 32t means negative 32 times t, to undo the multiplication and solve for t, we now divide both sides by negative 32. But because we are dividing both sides by a negative, we need to reverse the inequality symbol. Negative 32 divided by negative 32 is one, one times t is t. We have t is less than, again, we reverse the inequality symbol, and on the right, a negative divided by a negative is positive, we have positive 86 divided by positive 32. So while we could give the exact value of t by simplifying this fraction, we're asked to round to two decimal places. So let's find this quotient on the side. Of course, if you are allowed to use a calculator, you could find this quotient much faster. We begin by determining how many 32s were in 86, which is two. Two times 32 is 64. We subtract, the difference is 22. We know the two is correct because 22 is less than the divisor of 32. But we're asked to round to two decimal places. So now we place a decimal point to the right of the six in the dividend, move it up to the quotient, and now we can add zeros to the right of the decimal point. So we add a zero and bring it down, determine how many 32s are in 220, which is six. Six times 32 equals 192. Subtract, the difference is 28, which again is less than 32, and therefore the six is correct. Add another zero, bring it down. Determine how many 32s are in 280, which is eight. Eight times 32 equals 256. We subtract, the difference is 24. At this point, we need to keep going because we're asked to round to two decimal places. We need one more decimal place in the quotient. So we add another zero, bring it down, and determine how many 32s are in 240, which is seven. Seven times 32 equals 224. We subtract, and the difference is 16. And now we can stop. The eight is in the second decimal place, and the digit to the right, or the seven, indicates to round up, and therefore t is approximately 2.69, and our inequality is t is less than 2.69. So going back to our problem, we now know the solution to the inequality is t less than 2.69, which is when the velocity is positive or the arrow is moving upward. For the next part, since Mary shot the arrow at t equals zero, it does not make sense to include any answers where t is negative. Refine your answer from the last question to only include the answers where t is greater than or equal to zero, which means we need a compound inequality that indicates that t is less than 2.69 and t is greater than or equal to zero. We can express this more precisely. We can express this more precisely because remember inequalities can be read from left to right as well as from right to left. So starting with the variable t, we can say t must be less than 2.69. Notice this inequality is formed, reading it from left to right. 
but we can express the second inequality forming an inequality from right to left in this direction. We can say that t must also be greater than or equal to zero. This indicates that t is between zero and 2.69, where t equals zero is included, and t equals 2.69 is not included. And now for the last part, after the arrow traveled upwards, it came downwards. Mary timed the arrow's flight, and the arrow hit the ground at 4.1 seconds. Determine the values of t for which the arrow's velocity was negative. Let's model the information on a number line. The important values of t are t equals zero, t equals 2.69, and t equals 4.1. Let's first graph this interval where t is between zero and 2.69, where we include t equals zero and don't include 2.69, which means we make a closed point on zero an open point on 2.69, and we graph all the values between these two values. This is the interval for which the arrow is traveling up where the velocity is positive, which means for the values of t between 2.69 and 4.1, the arrow must be traveling downwards. We do not include 2.69 because at t equals 2.69, the arrow reaches the maximum height at which the velocity is zero at that instant, and we also don't include 4.1 because that's when it hits the ground. Which means the velocity is negative between t equals 2.69 and t equals 4.1, not including the endpoints, or over this interval here. Again, this is the interval where the velocity is negative or the arrow is traveling down. And again, this is a compound inequality where t is less than 4.1 reading from left to right, and reading from right to left, we can say that t is greater than 2.69. I hope you found this helpful.